In this video, we're talking about an intense storm that will bring tornadoes and large hail to a chunk of the U.S. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a moderate risk of severe weather with a 10% chance of tornadoes. Then, we're looking at the East Coast severe weather threat and another concerning day tomorrow. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. A moderate risk of severe weather is four out of five, okay? I don't know why moderate means more than enhanced. We only get a handful of these events a year, and it looks like today and tomorrow are both going to be moderate risks driven by the increased potential for wind, hail, and tornadoes. First of all, very interestingly, the entire northeastern part of the United States almost, uh, much of New England and the mid-Atlantic region and even down into the Appalachian region is in a slight risk of severe weather. That's two out of five. And that includes Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., New York City, Albany, all the way up into Burlington. And this is for a line of storms that could be severe later today that's going to bring some pretty good wind and maybe even some small hail. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. But if we slide over here to the central part of the United States, we've got a much bigger risk area. We've got a slight risk of severe weather that extends all the way down into western Texas and then up through Lubbock and Amarillo and eventually into the panhandle of Oklahoma. And then you can see it goes as far north as near Rapid City, South Dakota. And then right here in the middle, we've got a little bullseye uh, with that red there. That's that moderate risk. Once again, let's zoom in. Let's look at the exact areas that are going to be affected by this moderate risk. We've got North Platte here in Nebraska, Lexington, Kearney, and it doesn't really make it to the Grand Island area, but if you live there, or if you live in York, or Geneva, or Concordia in Kansas, don't let your guard down just because you're not in that red circle, okay? The weather doesn't care whether or not you're in a red circle. -y. <laughs> so yeah, a ton to talk about today. Let's go ahead and get into the weather models. All right, let's take a look at the HRRR model. Of course, we're going to start off by talking about some of the parameters here for severe weather. Right now, we're looking at the convective available potential energy. That's the amount of fuel in the atmosphere for these storms to really get going. And buddy, there's going to be a lot of it today. If you want to keep up with the time and date, it's always going to be right up there above my head. Now, let's take a look at what's causing this increased area of severe weather today and tomorrow. And I can go ahead and tell you right now that we've got a huge amount of moisture and energy uh, just coming up from the Gulf of Mexico here, okay? The Gulf of Mexico is warming up. Uh, in fact, it is uh, already warmer than average in, in many areas. And now that we've got that flow, that axis of um, you know airflow that comes up through Texas and Louisiana here and comes up into the plains, and then additionally, we have these troughs and short waves that are coming through that are bringing down a little bit of cold air behind them. It's just literally the perfect storm uh, for plains severe weather here uh, in you know the Midwest. This is something that we've been, you know, not having to deal with for a while now. I mean, like, you know, last year, uh, the year before that, I think the last time we had a significant severe weather season in a traditional tornado alley uh, was 2016. So, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of storm chasers out there who are really excited, and there's probably actually going to be thousands of them out there today and tomorrow uh, chasing for that, you know, really good photogenic uh, tornado shot. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what we're dealing with here with all of this moisture coming up uh, from the Gulf of Mexico. And you'll see here in a second how much convective energy we have out there. There's just going to be storms popping up left and right. Check this out. Here we are around 3 p.m. today, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Around this time is when the storms will really be uh, initiating. And as you can see, we've got four or 5,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE out here. Now, the most important area to watch as far as these CAPE values go is going to be over here uh, west of the main area down here because yeah, there's going to be scattered showers and thunderstorms that pop up over here, but there's really no cold front or dry line that's going to really allow for uh, this, uh, you know, con convective energy to be utilized. Uh, what we're really watching is over here, okay? And you can see where some of these bigger storms are going to be popping up uh, just west of that moderate risk area where we've got explosive cape values, explosive energy in the atmosphere up here. Just absolutely insane amounts of moisture. These are going to be towering cumulus clouds. There's going to be discrete supercells in the beginning stages and they are going to pack a punch with large hail damaging winds and also uh, possibly tornadoes okay now in a system like this another thing we look at is the lower level jet stream now this is really indicative of how possible uh, tornadoes are going to be we're watching this area specifically for where that uh, those high cape values are where the dew points are really high and where we think we're going to have a uh, you know storm strong enough to interact with that low level jet to possibly cause tornadoes here now watch this is the lower level jet stream once again we've got values you know, near 30 knots, 
uh, you know, 20, 30 knots right here. Once those get into the uh, 35 and 40 knot region, that's when they become concerning. And that's when they're actually uh, more prone uh, to producing tornadic thunderstorms. And as you can see here, we're all the way up near 50 and 60 knots uh, tonight around 10 p.m. Uh, that's 9 p.m. Uh, central out here as these storms get together. Now, here's another thing about this. You know, in the beginning stages of this severe weather outbreak today, when these storms are first popping up, there's not really going to be much of a low-level jet stream out here to you know cause these storms to rotate. Some of them will still rotate even without a strong low-level jet, uh, but that jet stream is going to increase the tendency for cyclonic rotation as we go later into the night. One thing we have going for us is it does look like at this point we're going to be looking at a completely linear mode of storms, and the storms will no longer be as discreet as they were earlier in the day, so it doesn't look like there's going to be like a tornado outbreak today okay definitely a chance of tornadoes out here but the tornado outbreak you know where there's multiple tornadoes down at the same time and you know we have widespread damage and and possibly a couple violent tornadoes ef3 or above that doesn't look like it's going to be the case today because it does take so long for this low level jet to ramp up however if you live out here do not let your guard down there will be a tornado or two today there might be four or five and in fact if these happen uh as an embedded thunderstorm event tonight after 10 p.m. It could be dark, okay? So we are talking about possibly uh, some naders in the dark around North Platte, Grand Island, all the way down into Salina and uh, Concordia, uh, Kansas, okay? So <laughs> naders in the dark are, are extremely dangerous, all right? Do not play around with them. Okay, so let's look at what you guys actually want to see <laughs> and time out these storms here as they come through the high plains in the Midwest. Okay, here we go. Storms are really going to start initiating in South Dakota and Nebraska around 5 p.m. Central Time. Okay, and as you can see, we've got a swirling little low pressure system here, uh, and that's actually what's bringing down the cold air and helping bringing up the uh, the warm air. We, we're going to have a really strong warm nose of uh, very moist and warm air here, and then as you can see, we've got the snow uh, back building in here and that's going to you know show you that there's cold air back here that's going to interact with this uh, so as we pull it forward just a little bit these things pop up really fast okay we've got a, a pretty intense area of storms right here on the border of nebraska and south dakota we also have a pretty intense cluster of thunderstorms here in northeastern colorado and then we have an area of possibly discrete thunderstorms popping up in west kansas uh, this right here could be tornadic in nature uh, same thing down here near amarillo uh, we're going to have some storms maybe popping up by the themselves so we've got to watch these two areas especially um, in the beginning stages of these storms because they do look like they could possibly uh, become uh, isolated supercells here we are at 10 p.m. that's 9 p.m. central at this point we're still gonna have a little bit of daylight out there so you know if we have tornadoes at this point I don't think we could call them you know naders in the dark but look at this right here in the panhandle of Texas moving into western Oklahoma we do have uh, you know according to the HRRR maybe an, a completely isolated supercell thunderstorm uh, bringing a large hail and possibly a tornado to this region. Uh, also, right here in Kansas, I'm really, you know, I'm liking the look of these storms. If, you know, if you're a storm chaser out there, if you're trying to intercept a tornado, I would play the Kansas game today around Hayes. Um, especially around this time period, around 9 p.m. Uh, Central. Uh, that does look like a very interesting setup on the southern flank of this, you know, uh, mesoscale convective system. And e maybe even you're going to find a, a discrete supercell down there to your south, okay? And then up here, we have a little bit more of a linear mode starting to happen. And, you know, this this is still a dangerous situation. If you live in Kearney, if you live in a Grand Island, if you live, you know, east of this line, don't think that you're safe today. Don't think that you're out of the woods just because, you know, this doesn't look like a giant area of supercells with tornadoes is heading for you when this all congeals together there's such a cold pool of air behind it it's going to push through really quick and it's going to be strong and it's going to pack you know really strong winds with it okay so we're going to be looking at damaging winds in excess of 70 miles an hour here once this turns into a line of storms let's keep pushing this forward and as you can see around 3 a.m tonight this kind of turns into a mainly a heavy rain event uh, as it moves into iowa and missouri okay probably a pretty strong storm moving through the kansas city metro no tornado or anything like that okay and then that's going to move out of here uh, pretty quick we are going to have you know a line of storms moving through uh, Missouri and eastern Kansas maybe even into Illinois uh, during the morning hours uh, and that actually might try to kick up and cause some more severe weather uh, as it moves off to the south and east during the heating of the day but for now let's talk about the east all right let's rewind it back here and looky here guys we are once again talking about the east coast possibly getting some rain can you believe it guys it's like we are in this drought 
droughts. I mean, some of us, uh, you know, even where I live down here, haven't heard a rumble of thunder all year. It's May 26th, and finally, uh, we're going to get some rain. And in fact, it does look like there's a little bit of a chance of uh, some of this rain becoming uh, pretty intense today. Maybe some severe thunderstorms out there, uh, especially up here in the interior northeast region, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, upstate New York, especially in the eastern half. Uh, we do have actually a 5% chance of tornadoes up here today as some of these storms could be a little strong. Look here, around you know uh, 4 or 5 p.m. today, some of these storms, as they move through, could be multicellular. Some of them could be supercellular. I want to show you the lower level jet stream again because look here, it's actually kicked up pretty strong here, especially in Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, and on the border of Quebec up there. It does look like we could possibly be talking about uh, some severe thunderstorms, definitely capable of rotating enough to cause tornadoes once again in upstate New York, uh, Vermont and New Hampshire here. So definitely be weather aware today. These are not going to be, you know, if you don't get a tornado, if you do not get a tornado today and you live in one of these areas, these storms aren't going to be so intense that, you know, they cause widespread damage. However, um, these storms are going to be in an, a, in a, in a favorable environment for rotation. So even if it's just a regular little thunderstorm uh, gets enough energy, gets enough uh, interaction with that lower level jet stream to rotate enough to cause a tornado, we could be talking about a significant day uh, of damage uh, in some places up here if those tornadoes do occur. But outside of the tornado threat, it's mainly just you know a wind threat and a hail threat. Uh, once again, I do believe some of the strongest storms are going to occur right in here. Uh, as you can see, it looks like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., uh, 8 p.m. That looks like the uh, the, the target time frame here for weather to move in, okay? Um, looks like Pittsburgh's gonna get it about 4 p.m. Albany's gonna get it around 4 p.m. as well. And then some storms may be moving into the Washington DC area around 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, with the more intense storms now working into North Jersey around 9 p.m. And at this point, everything's really gonna start weakening pretty fast. But I do believe New York City, Long Island, Connecticut here, we'll see some rumbles of thunder, possibly a pretty good lightning show around 11 p.m. tonight. And then, uh, yeah, all that's gonna get out of here. And then the next thing we got to worry about is the uh, the area of you know strong weather that we're seeing in the Midwest today moving into the east. And as I said, that's probably going to spark another little severe weather threat here uh, in the St. Louis region tomorrow. And then that's going to dive to the south and east and be a little you know mesoscale convective system, uh, possibly even a rotating one with its own little area of low pressure there. Uh, once again, causing some rain showers down here in Missouri, Kentucky, Illinois, and Indiana. Back to the central U.S. Let's. <laughs> Let's uh, you know go forward a little bit once again, and now we're looking at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Now we're in the heating of the day tomorrow. Okay, let me show you some stuff. Surface moisture, two meter dew points. Dew points are going to be absolutely incredible out here in the mid 70s for a lot of the uh, feeder areas for these storms. Once again, we've got cool, dry air back here. Very warm air and moist air out in front of it here. Perfect situation for a severe weather setup. Once again, this is for tomorrow. And then I want you to check this out. Uh, Cape Valley use near 5,000 once again in eastern Kansas and in the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma over here. Uh, just once again, another day in insane values for severe weather. Actually, we're nearing 6,000 joules per kilogram up here in south of Kansas City uh, at 4 p.m. on Thursday. So the Storm Prediction Center does have a, an enhanced risk of severe weather out here uh, for tomorrow. I do believe that there may be a moderate risk added to that as we go uh, into the day tomorrow. And let, let's look at the timing. Let's look at these storms too. These actually look like they're also going to be possibly tornadic in nature, but it has even more to do on this day with the storm mode, okay? We talked about today how the storms up here, uh, if we can get supercell thunderstorms that form by themselves and not congeal into a big mess of, of storms in a line, then we're gonna have a bigger tornado threat. The, the same thing reigns true tomorrow, okay? Uh, obviously up here in Missouri and in, in this region right here, yeah, we've got the potential for severe weather, but I think the tornado threat's gonna be pretty low up here because all of the rain, all of the storm modes are gonna be linear in nature and the, and the direction that they're heading is just not indicative of tornadoes. Area that I would watch mostly is going to be in uh, northeastern Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas, maybe even southwestern uh, Missouri here, and then even as far down into uh, Oak, you know Oklahoma as western Oklahoma and then the upper panhandle of uh, Texas there. So let's keep pushing this forward. As you can see, we've got possibly supercell thunderstorms around 5 or 6 p.m. Uh, central time, especially over 
over here in this region, I, I swear it's like the Red River Valley right there on the, the border of Oklahoma and Texas this year has just been the winner uh, for severe weather. We've had so many photogenic supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes out here this year, and it does look like there's a, another chance is occurring tomorrow. Uh, but what's different here is we actually have a decent chance of severe weather in uh, northern parts of Oklahoma as well. This will affect Tulsa, and it'll eventually affect Oklahoma City, but I think Tulsa has a better chance of seeing significant severe weather, especially as far as tornadic activity goes um, as we look at these storms right here. Uh, at 8 p.m. though, 7 p.m. Central, everything does start to congeal and become a linear mode of storm. So as you can see, right around 8 p.m., 9 p.m. there, everything becomes a line of storms and it moves off to the south. And at this point, it's just a regular thunderstorm you know what i mean like yeah we're gonna have wind we're gonna have the hail but it's oklahoma you guys you 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 don't care about that um <laughs> All right, that's all the weather talk I have today. Uh, if you like my pillow here, make sure you go to shop.helicity.co and get you one. They've also got t-shirts, mugs. I mean, it's the weather nerd's place to get weather stuff, okay? Um, you can use the code Ryan Hall, y'all, to get 5% off. Also, there's a 50% chance that I go live this evening, so make sure you're subscribed uh, with notifications on so you don't miss that notification as we uh, watch possibly a severe weather outbreak unfold today with multiple tornadoes. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Woo!